right, so Griffith's electrodynamics, problem 2.18. So we have two different spheres that are displaced by a vector that we call D. And our job is to find the electric field um, just in this region right here. Okay, so these spheres could look like this, or they, I mean, they could even be much more closely, maybe they're, they're much more um, overlapping, you know, and they're barely uh, misaligned a little bit. So, I mean, the, the situation could equally look like this. In fact, uh, Griffiths later on uses this I think it's when he's talking about atomic polarizability, um, I believe, um, when you have an atom, say, say you had uh, two sort of uh, clouds of, of positive and negative charge, and you put it in an external electric field, um, some of them are going to shift, and, and anyway, basically he, he uses a situation like this, so, so this is important. It's actually a really cool result. It's kind of similar to to that whole um, uh, find the uh, find the magnetic field inside of a inside of a wire. Um, that we have a video about that too. But all right, so um, just we'll go ahead and do this a couple ways, um, kind of a longer way first, not that much longer. Um, but first, um, it says. Uh, Okay, so each of these uh, each of these spheres has a radius of r, big R. Um, each one has uniform volume charge densities rho and minus rho. So um, this one has rho and this one has minus rho, right? Because it says to define this d vector from the center of the positive charge to the center of the negative charge. So I'll just plus sign here and a minus sign over here. All right. Um, okay, so partially overlap. Um, and it gives us a hint, says use the answer to problem 2.12. Um, that's a Gauss's law problem where we found the um, electric field inside of a uniformly charged sphere. We're going to go through that really quick just again. Just to refresh, so you don't have to go back and watch 2.12 again if you forgot it. All right, so um, it won't take very long. The equation we use for Gauss's law, um, due to spherical symmetry, we are just going to find the magnitude. Um, area of a sphere is for pi r squared, and the volume. Um, we're going to have the volume charge density over the sum now multiplied by the volume, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. All right, 4 pi's cancel out r squared from both sides, and we find our magnitude to be rho over epsilon naught, um, and then we have an r over 3. And due to symmetry, know that the vector form of this is just going to be in the r hat direction, just a radial um, direction. So one uh, little shortcut we'll use for this problem is uh, we're going to group together this r, r hat right here. Um, so we have an, a, a row over 3 epsilon naught and these group together just to be our um, vector. All right, so, all right, we'll do this a little bit uh, more full explanation, uh, more fully by using a coordinate system, and then we'll just do it real quick without a coordinate system. So with a coordinate system, let's go ahead and put this along just the x-axis, so, we will call this the center of positive charge, 
and um, over here at D we'll have uh, the center of negative charge and see if I can draw you'll, you'll just have to really use your imagination that I made these perfect circles and these dots are in the center but we're going to look for any uh, point inside sort of the overlapping region of the Venn diagram <laughs> this is what it looks like right um, and we're going to find because because uh, this vector R is from the center of charge distribution. So we have one that's coming from the center of this one, and we have one that's coming from the center of this one. Um, this one we're going to call R plus, and again this is, I'm just calling this the X um, axis, and this one can be Y. <coughs> and uh, okay, so right, so we have one vector coming from the center of the positive charge distribution and one coming from the center of the negative one, and I'm just gonna call that R minus. Okay, a really crowded diagram. <laughs> kind of turned out not so great, but uh, now when we, when we want to find the electric field at any point inside here, we know we just have to add up these two uh, vectors, or the, the electric field from the two parts, and we know what that is found it. Okay, so the total electric field is going to be, um, so if we have a positive component, which is the density is plus rho, 3 epsilon naught, and that is in the direction of the R plus vector and also dependent on the magnitude, so how far away you are from the center of charge here. All right, and then we're going to add in the other part, and for that we have a density of minus rho. Same equation here, and this time we have the minus, or uh, yeah, R minus. All right, so again, using this xy basis, let's just write out these uh, components. I'm going to bring out the row, rows the same, just the sign is different, and 3 epsilon naught, I'm going to factor this all out. All right, so um, row r, r plus um, is just going to be an x, x hat plus y, y hat. Okay, so this is R plus. Okay, and now, man, I should have written the intermediate step. We'll write that up here real quick. It's just an R plus minus an R minus. So that's what we're writing down here. So here's the R plus part. Now we need to do minus the R minus part. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in braces just to keep it kind of separate. All right, so for the x component, we have x minus d. So you can think of if you were, you know, if x is greater than d, we'd have some point over here, and we'd get, you know, we're just shifting this origin over here, so it's a, an x minus d. It's a little weirder to think about it on this side because x is smaller than d, but you get this negative value because the vector is going in the other direction. So we have x minus d, x hat, plus y is not affected, y is not shifted at all, so just a normal y, y hat. And uh, okay, so this piece here is, is our, uh, our minus vector. So we'll just work this out real quick. Okay, x minus x, and then we have a minus of a minus d. So for x, we just end up with a d. 
in the x hat direction, and then the y and the y don't change, and the, it's just subtracted right out. So we have no component for y. So this is just it. All right, so the thing here to, to recognize is that we have this d in the x hat direction is the same as uh, as just a d vector like that. All right, so we'll work this out real quick the, the fast way, which is we don't worry about x and y. We just uh, we can draw our center of positive charge right here. We have an r plus. Here's our minus, and we have an R minus, like this, okay, and our E, we're just going to use that, uh, we actually came across this equation right here, this is the one we're going to use, rather than go into all the different components, we're just going to Okay, so this is r plus add the opposite of r minus. So we're just going to take, since we're taking the opposite of r minus, we'll just take the arrowhead and put it on the other side. Use the, you know, the add the tip to the to the tail of the other one, and boom, we have our our new vector, which is this piece right here. And then when we just look at our our diagram, we can see that this vector is called d. So, same answer, just a, a faster way of, of doing it. So, what does this even mean? It means it means if we have two um, spheres of charge that the electric field is just going to be uniform, meaning all the field vectors are parallel, they're all equally spaced, it's a completely uniform uh, field.